and we're gonna see how much of a gap we can get in between those two links. So I can get, uh, what is it? Not very much, about a half an inch or so, maybe a little bit less. So that is about what I'm looking for. Uh, I'm not looking for overall tight, but I'm looking for decently, decently tight. So here at SWI, we have some favorite colors. Dang holes, man. Here at SWI, we have some favorite colors. We love orange. We like white and black. And we love yellow. This thing right here, what is this thing holding? It looks just huge and dangerous and it's gonna hurt you. This is a fence hog. So what it does is it has two hydraulic functions. One hydraulic function is for the cage to open up to release a roll or grab another roll. And then the other hydraulic function is for it to tilt when you're going on a, a side slope. But are they worth the money? If you do a lot of chain link, absolutely. 100% well worth the money. This thing saves us so much time. Uh, just in the last week, we put up 2,900 feet of chain link on this job. So this thing sees a ton of chain link. Once you tie off to the post, you drive forward slowly. The operator that sits in the machine, uh, his responsibility is watching out for this as well as the ground guy to make sure that nothing gets caught. The ground guy is gonna watch your feeder to make sure that it's coming out of uh, the hog nicely and it's not getting caught up inside itself. Uh, this piece right here, that's spring loaded. There's a lever right there where Andrew has his hand on. So as the operator sits in the machine, he can pull on that lever. This bar is gonna flip forward, flip out like that. You're gonna hook the chain link like so, make sure you're in the exact same straw all the way down, which we are. The operator will then put tension on this and pull all the slack out from behind him. Does it fit a 100 foot roll of chain link? Yes, it does. It fits it just fine. Uh, I think I've actually, when I've gone and picked up a job, I fit three 50 foot rolls of chain link in there. So yeah, it'll fit a 100 foot just fine. Uh, this overall height right here is eight foot tall, so you can get a eight foot tall chain link in there just fine. If you were to go taller, um, they do have the attachment to go up taller to take it up to 12. The highest that we've gone in one single uh, stretch of chain link, we've gone all the way up to 14 foot. We just put the 14 foot roll in there, let the top overhang and kind of just, it bounces around, but it does just fine. So the thingy that we're putting in right now, that is called a tension bar. And it goes down in the straw and it helps you tie it off to, tie the chain link off to the terminal post. So we're just gonna put our next tension bands right on top of all the last ones. So it's just gonna stack. Now, if that was our first tie off, we'd count all of them out to make sure that they're equally spaced. And on the seven foot, we've been going about four, four diamonds. We were just telling you about how we could stretch with that, but we want, since this is such a short section, we wanna show you another way that you can stretch and how to do it. And then we'll show you how to stretch on that next section with that over there. But we're gonna do something different right here. We're gonna use one of these. This is a chain link rake. So what we're gonna do is you need to input the tension bar and we're gonna put that halfway. They come in various lengths but i just carry that one with me because it fits on my truck and doesn't take up a ton of room and then again we're going to use another boundary strainer chain walker and how come this one looks different because it is see this one it's got the swivel in it right there 
and it does have the snap hook. So we're gonna insert that into the uh, chain link rake. This is the four meter chain. So it's a little bit longer than what we need, but if we were doing a really long stretch. Meter. Yeah, meter. If we were doing a really long stretch by hand, this is absolutely the chain that I would recommend. So we're gonna put some tension on it. We're just gonna go back. We're gonna shake that fabric. So that way if the chain link's caught on the ground somewhere, it pulls it free. If you don't shake it, sometimes it'll get caught on the ground and then you'll get all tied off and find out that it's caught and have to do it all over again because you got some slack back there that you didn't shake out. You stop as soon as all the diamonds stretch out and they look like rectangles. Kidding. And we're gonna see how much of a gap we can get in between those two links. So I can get, uh, what is it? Not very much, about a half an inch or so. Maybe a little bit less. That is about what I'm looking for. Uh, I'm not looking for overall tight, but I'm looking for decently, decently tight. So this one's, I've beat it up pretty bad. But what is this? This is a top rail dresser. And it is designed to dress the top rail, to pull the top rail down whenever you have a, uh, whenever you're coming to a peak to get that to flow really nice. Uh, another thing that we use it for is to hold the chain link up for us uh, when we're doing a tie off, such as this. So, I'm gonna hook it back to itself, back to the chain link. And what we're looking for is we are looking for half diamond to be at the center of the top rail is where we're looking to put that chain link at. That's, that's where it belongs. So now that that's being held up by the top rail dresser, we can go ahead and figure out where we need to cut this at. What I did there was I cut on each side of the twist and then the knuckle. So that way when we pull that straw out, we still have one perfectly good straw when we go back to weaving two pieces of chain link back together. So now that we have our chain link cut, if you notice, we're not quite touching the post up here and down here we're past the post we're on a little bit of a slope, an uphill terrain. From that tie off to here is an uphill terrain. That's why that's the long side, that's the short side. So level level and, and perpendicular to the ground is not the same thing. Yes. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and bias cut this. So from top to bottom, we have 24 diamonds. We wanna be in the third straw. So that means that we want to go down eight cut and move over and go down another eight and cut and then we'll be in the third. So watch as I do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I want to cut right there. So now I'm not using this part of the straw anymore. I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna go straight across and down to this diamond I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're gonna cut right here. Go up one, cut this one. That's the waist that we cut from up above. Take that out and throw that away. So now we're gonna cut down here on the second diamond. And we're going to take that waist out. So now we need to stuff the tension bar in the bias cut. Okay, so we're going to go down to that first cut right there. And we're going to transfer over into that next link. We're going to go down. And we're going to transfer again in that next cut.
and there's that. If I really want to hold the chain link up for me again, we can put a pole jack on it. And it can hold it for us. So we're just trying to space out our tension bands by going down four to four and a half. And we're going down four diamonds consistently. And on our last one, we went to four and a half. So we're gonna take this piece of fabric and this piece of fabric and merge them to one. So they're gonna be one. We have to stitch them together. Your first one here is a half. Well, the first one. See how that first one is a hole? It's all about the first one. It's all about the first one. If we had a hole in a hole, you would come together like that and your fabric would not match up. So you have to have one hole and one half on the very first one. And then we're gonna stitch them together. Weave, marry, stitch. Whatever. And then you bend it back together. You do knuckle knuckle, just like so. So earlier I was telling you about how this wire was two by nine by 84, KT. So this diamond is a two by two diamond. It's a nine gauge wire. KT stands for knuckle twist. So this is a twist up here. Down here at the bottom is, is the knuckle. It's all knuckled together instead of twist. You can have two by nine by 84 TT or KK, uh, which would be knuckle knuckle or twist twist. Now, knuckle twist is pretty standard. This wire is also GAW, galvanized after weaving. This time we are gonna stretch with the fence hog. Uh, we are not gonna stretch the same way that we did last time, since this section is just a little bit bigger and we are actually able to stretch the fence hog. We'll probably use pole jacks at the very end as well. So this here is a pole jack. It's designed to put tension, pull tension on the chain link. Just another stretching device, but more so for shorter runs, or in this case scenario, we were meeting at the top, but missing at the bottom. So instead of pulling the whole machine forward and bringing a whole bunch more slack up, it's easier just to do this. When you put these on in such a manner, make sure you always pay attention to your top one. Because when you put your top, when you put your bottom one on, it likes to loosen the top one and if you're not careful, this one will come down and hit you in the head. So 
So a rule of thumb is you should be putting on as many ties on your post as you put tension bands on your terminal post. So since we did six tension bands, we're gonna do six ties. This is what our chain link uh, fence ties now look like. This is a nine gauge, two and three eighths tie. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it right there over the part of the chain link straw that is closest to the post. And here in a second, I'm gonna lift it up to him and he's gonna tie it. We're shooting for the center of the diamond to be center of the top rail. Yep. That is the tie tool that ties these. So that is a nine gauge tie tool and it'll tie any nine gauge tie. There's two different types of ties. There's an 11 gauge and there's a nine gauge. The chain link's gonna give long before that tie ever does. So now it's time for us to dress the fence. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift it up where it needs to be lifted up and we're gonna drop it where it needs to be dropped. At the post, it's just fine. The foot stomper. I think it's the foot stomper or the foot dresser. Instead of using your fingers to pull down on the chain link, because it hurts, use your weight. What the goal is to do is to try to get this to flow just nice and flat and roll with the top rail. And to try to keep that in the center of the top rail, the center of the diamond in the center of the top rail, the whole way down. Right here, we're almost one diamond too high. Put our little foot stomper on there and pull it down where needed. So we have the top rail ties and the mid rail brace rail ties, but they are further down with the other crew on the fence line. So we're gonna tie it later, sorry. But it is exactly the same concept as the post. It's just a smaller tie. The last thing I have to show you is the tension wire. It does have a purpose. It's gonna be hog ringed every nine diamonds. Maybe you've seen it where the chain link has has a buckle and it buckles out or buckles in. This is to prevent that from happening. And we're gonna install these hog rings all the way across the entire job. And it goes every nine diamonds.